Thank you all for your time uh, today. Um, I think today and this week is really an exciting celebration of incredible work that, that's been done by a lot of talent um, across all the streams. Uh, I've been really lucky, honored, and privileged to be the representative. I wouldn't call myself the leader. I would call myself the representative of the PNG stream. Um, and today I'll just summarize essentially some of the main scientific uh, findings. And of course, uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank everybody for their hard work, particularly our wonderful honors students, PhD students, um, colleagues at Sydney Uni and beyond, the incredible developers that really underpinned all the exciting research that we could, uh, we could do. Um, and of course, uh, our wonderful industry collaborators at uh, Oil Search. And uh, I just say uh, that I've, uh, I've loved working with, with all of you. And I think this is just a, the first step on, on a long journey. So I'm looking forward to where this all takes us. So here is, I guess, a picture of the immediate PNG team uh, slash family. Uh, so uh, I'll, be, I'll be showcasing some of the work of uh, these individuals uh, today. Uh, today, I'm going to focus on the scientific outcomes of the tectonics, mantle flow, paleogeography, deformation history, landscape evolution. And on Thursday, uh, my short talk, actually there, I want to focus on the industry and societal impacts, these measurable things, you know, that the ARC is interested in. But, but of course, for us, we want to know that we have um, made a difference to industry and broader society. And I can proudly say that uh, the PNG stream and all the other BGA streams have done uh, an incredible job with, um, you know, for uh, supporting basic science, industry research, and um, uh, helping us understand um, major challenges of the 21st century. Okay, so let's jump into Southeast Asia and uh, PNG, our, our favorite region, right? Um, it's a very complex tectonic region, uh, long lived convergence between. Uh, the Indo-Australian, Eurasian, Pacific plates. Uh, and you can just see in these blue lines with these dismembered pink ophiolites uh, that create this mosaic or network of suture zones, a very complex uh, uh, network of suture zones, that's for sure. And uh, of course, Papua New Guinea is very important for even the Australian continent because it sits on the northern margin of, of, the, of the plate. Uh, and it's recorded a number of rifting and, and collisional events. Uh, and one of the issues that we face, I guess, with the PNG region is that it is remote. It is in the equatorial humid belt with very little uh, poor outcrop. Um, and there's been multiple overprinting events, essentially. And so you can see that there's been, um, here is uh, age 40, 30, 20, and 10 million years uh, and these are the different, I guess, tectonic reconstructions that have been uh, um, made. Um, and there's many of them. And I guess uh, what I can say here is that we've added one. And so um, I, I, either we've confused things more, but I, I, I would argue that we've clarified, particularly the collisional histories um, and some of the rifting uh, histories. Um, I, I think when we first started uh, talking with oil search, the discussions were really at, at the well scale but uh, through our work, and I, I think we've put in those, uh, put those wells in that bigger regional context of tectonics and geodynamics. And I think that's been a, a real great help for both teams. So we started looking at the plate tectonic reconstructions, trying to untangle the evidence. Um, it, it became very clear that there was, uh, first of all, a, a, a back arc opening episode from about 160 million years ago. Uh, the central uh, Irian Ophiolite belt, for example, is the supra subduction zone affinities. Uh, another thing that was quite confusing was that uh, PNG, where there was there one collision or two collisions. Um, I, I think very early on we, we realized that there were two collisions, but weren't sure that earlier collision didn't happen at 50 million years ago or 30 million years ago. The, the geological record was quite confused. But after many of our tests, that 50 million year uh, collision seems to make more sense. Um, and the Luke Marnie's recent work with thermochronology uh, supports this earlier age of the collision as well. When we look at the, oops. 
where's the animation? When we look at the mantle flow, so here are the plate reconstructions um, combined with the mantle convection in SIDCOM S. This is, these are the compressible models uh, that Rakib uh, helped me set up. And of course, uh, Joe Tobin's honors thesis made use of these extensively. We could test the end member scenarios of the CPIC collision. Did it occur at 50 or 30 million years ago? And it was um, very interesting from Joe Tobin's research that essentially if you have a collision at 50 million years ago, you create a slab beneath Australia at the correct depths where we have this blue slab material, okay? And at the correct latitudes. When you get a collision at 30 million years ago, the younger collision, uh, you produce a slab that is shallower, of course, uh, but it's uh, further north as well, um, away from this slab um, that we can image in the P wave tomography, for example. Uh, so that was really an important um, and first uh, implication of, of this research. Um, and more broadly, well, when we look at the subduction history, uh, Northeast Australia, Papua New Guinea, uh, has essentially been sitting on this uh, Greg Dunwelling, um, Deep Mark calls this, I think it's a great term, these slab burial grounds of, of Southeast Asia as Australia has gone north. Um, and one of the great things about these uh, compressible uh, mantle convection models in SITCOMS, uh, particularly um, some of the work that Joe Tobin did with, with testing the end member scenarios, is that for the first time, the dynamic topography models um, could actually uh, reproduce the northeastward tilt of the Australian plate and continent. And that's, that's been uh, proposed a long time ago, for example, by Sandiford uh, and others. Uh, interestingly, despite the fact that we just drive this, these global models with subduction from the surface, uh, the self-organizing nature of the mantle upwellings and the, particularly the mantle plumes is very interesting because at least the location of the plumes uh, is, is, is quite good. I think it's only a few hundred kilometers off. So here's Kerguelen, uh, here, is, um, uh, here is Caroline. Of course, they erupt uh, and ascend at slightly the wrong times, but from global models, this has been a, a really interesting advance. So uh, Lauren Harrington uh, and, and the team, Dietmar and others, uh, started looking at the paleogeography um, of, of Papua New Guinea. Um, and, and so what you can see here from 30, 20, 10, 5 million years, uh, you can see actually that, that the New Guinea, at least mainland, was largely emergent 30 million years ago, but then became uh, uh, sub submerged with only the, the mountains really poking through the, the water. And it's, that's kind of strange because we know that in the last 30 million years, long-term sea level has fallen We've had the glaciations of Antarctica. Um, and when we look at other parts of Southeast Asia, like Sundaland, we can see that there's been increased flooding in Sundaland as well as Papua New Guinea. And, and so the great thing about this work that we've been doing with, with building uh, these numerical models is that it, it seems like we can attribute dynamic topography, that dynamic substance from subduction uh, for New Guinea, particularly that Marimuni arc subduction in the last 22 million years um, seems to have played a really important role as well as uh, overriding the, the uh, slabs from, uh, I, I guess, the Caroline um, arc as well. Uh, and we, we see a similar uh, pattern in Sunderland as well. When we started uh, back in 2015 thereabouts, we had paleogeographic maps from the old Bureau of uh, Mineral Resources uh, and the fantastic more recent work of Martin Norwick uh, at Melbourne. Um, and through efforts uh, led by Anna Jameson, uh, Sarah Moran, and um, from assistance from me, um, uh, Anna was able to essentially create the first uh, whole continental paleogeographic maps um, that include Australia uh, and, and New Guinea. And that's because the, the old paleogeographic atlas of Australia from Geoscience Australia, AGSO, and, and I guess BMR before that, um, cut off these maps essentially at the tip um, of, of Queensland, didn't go into Papua New Guinea. Um, and we will be making these, these maps, shapefiles, uh, rasters, uh, available to our industry partners, and Sarah Moron uh, will make a post about that. So I think that's been a really important advance 
because it underpinned a lot of um, other work. So here I'm going to now start talking about the landscape evolution models in Badlands. Of course, I'd like to uh, here um, give a shout out to Tristan who single-handedly supported the technical development of, of Badlands. But these are the first um, continental scale models of Australia and PNG. Uh, this was led by Carmen Braz, Lauren Harrington, of course, with Tristan uh, involved too. And of course, these models are at 50 kilometer resolution, but they capture 150 million years of, of evolution of, of Australia's uh, geography. We have the uplift of the uh, Cordillera. Uh, we have the flooding uh, in inundation of the Aramanga Sea in the Cretaceous, uh, which recedes. And we've got, of course, the collisional a history that creates the uplift in Papua New Guinea. Um, these models, I, I, Carmen will uh, talk about that on Thursday, but, but they really highlight something that we haven't been able to model uh, and take into account for a long time, which is uh, the role of flexure. It seems very important. Dynamic topography is clearly important. But this, this modeling really helped us test different sea level curves. Most of you know that there's a huge a variety of sea level curves out there. So th this is really quite um, important work. Now to increase the resolution, uh, uh, Joe Ibrahim has helped us run models uh, focused, I guess, the, on the Gulf of Papua, this uh, basin um, uh, here um, in the last 2 million years. And, and this is a model resolution of about five kilometers and you can see it includes a, a, a much more uh, detailed sea level curve. You see the changing coastlines, um, Australia and New Guinea being one uh, land mass and then being separated uh, very abruptly uh, through these sea level changes. And this was really one of the first applications of the Carbonate Platform Reef Development Module uh, in Badlands. And I think that's going to be quite interesting for us uh, uh, to explore in the future. Um, and of course, uh, I, I think uh, the incredible achievement of Rhiannon, um, congratulations on, on getting your PhD very recently, and congratulations on this incredible work, which is the highest resolution PNG models with 500 meter resolution uh, covering the last 35,000 years. Um, and for the Basin Hub, this really has been one of the uh, best demonstrations of the source to sink systems uh, using this new rock tracking module from Badlands. You can see the essentially, essentially the lithologies from the uh, mainland, um, uh, you know, everything from the ocholites and mafix, the carbonates, being able to track them and their deposition is just such an astonishing achievement and advance uh, for us in industry. So well done on, on those. Um, and of course, this is a, a really wonderful image here uh, produced by Claire Mallard, who, who's been um, helping us uh, with these models as well. You can see the, the reefs dotted around here yep. um, and, and the, the realism that we can actually extract from some of these models is just phenomenal. I know. Um, we've had to use different models um, because of the, the scales that we're working on um, and the resolutions that we require. Uh, but they've all given us very important insights into uh, the, the processes that dominate uh, basin evolution uh, at different times. And that's, that's really been interesting. You know, uh, flexure may be really important at a particular time, whereas, of course, the tectonic uplifts uh, at other times may dominate. Um, and, and I think that's been really, really fundamental. Of course, there's a complex interplay of uh, sea level change, uh, flexure, dynamic topography, but also precipitation, climate. Um, and that lithospheric uh, deformation. So hopefully the, the, the next step, the future steps is to bring the different scales together into a cohesive paleogeographic framework uh, and look at the evolution of, of Northern um, Australia, PNG, um, incorporate those G plates deforming models um, and, and, uh, and the, you know, um, the horizontal and vertical movements from uh, there. Now, um, there's been a huge amount of work done by uh, Patrice and others using uh, Underworld uh, in, in looking at the deformation histories. And, and this, this animation, I think, is one of the most useful animations that, that uh, I've seen of, of subduction numerical model, modeling. I use this in teaching all the time, Patrice. Thank you. <laughs> um, but th this animation uh, and this model highlights the really interesting dynamics of an active margin with convergence. 
where you can have extension during the rollback phase, but uh, uh, that very easily uh, the, the trench can advance and cause uh, compression basin inversion and, and uplift. Um, and, and so this has been really uh, uh, powerful. Um, it's very relevant to the Marimuni arc uh, subduc uh, subduction uh, in the last 20 or so million years. Uh, and there's been some really interesting work with a 3D numerical sandbox models uh, that, that's been done by the team too. And of course, Roman Boucher at uh, Melbourne and now ANU was, was key to a lot of that. Now, um, of course, um, industry oil search, we're really always quite interested at, at the finest scales as well. Uh, and so uh, Joe Ibrahim, Lukmani and Patrice uh, ramped up the resolution to look at the crust. And you can see here, these are some of the models. Oops. Uh, these are some of the models from uh, Joe Ibrahim. Uh, where essentially you can explore the uh, role of isostasy, but most importantly, the role of the me mechanical stratigraphy, the relative strengths of these rock units and what that means for the deformation style, uh, particularly as structures at depth and PNG, where you've got very remote uh, uh, topography, um, the, the seismic reflection data uh, can be really difficult to interpret. Um, so these models are really uh, quite useful in, in uh, supplementing the seismic interpretations uh, and trying to understand what the structures look like at depth. I mentioned to you at the beginning um, that when we, when we started, we weren't quite sure when these collisions uh, on the New Guinea margin occurred. Uh, and um, Joe Tobin's work suggested that a collision closer to 15 million years ago was better at reducing the mantle structure. Uh, and this has been essentially confirmed by the wonderful work of Luke Marnie, Kevin Hill, and the team uh, at uh, uh, Melbourne University that were looking at thermochronology. And you can see here is in the Western Miller Ranges from about 15 million years ago, there's a significant unroofing event. And then another one at 10 million uh, years ago. So essentially very clear indication of a, a two discrete collisions. And the very detailed structural restorations by Luke Marnie, Kevin Hill, and others um, provide a really important constraint for uh, the future Badlands models, uh, future G-plates deformation models. Um, and uh, what, what, uh, what they show is there's only been about 12 to 21% of shortening, uh, which really put, throws a spanner in the works because there's quite extreme high topography of about seven kilometers above the regional average. Um, and, and so that, that's really quite interesting to explore, you know, the role of uh, this thinner sphere and lift, uh, mantle uh, in the future. And importantly, some of this work that, that this Eocene uh, collision uh, removed up to three kilometers of sediment was uh, really quite a key um, uh, achievement. So uh, hopefully here, I've, I've just given you an overview of the work that's been done uh, on Thursday at uh, uh, from 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time in Australia here. Uh, there's going to be a lot more uh, detailed talks on all of these topics, but hopefully you've seen the great success of the uh, PNG stream, looking at the complex uh, tectonic history, the extensions and the extensional episodes uh, the oblique convergence and diachronous collisions that resulted to produce a very complex uh, topography and, of course, uh, structural style that we see in the fold and thrust belt um, in Papua New Guinea. Uh, the key thing here is that these open source tools, whether it's G plates, Commerce Underworld, Badlands, they've been really key to uh, de risking or at least reducing the risk of exploration. Um, an interpretation of, of the regional geology and, of course, those wells, which can cost many millions of dollars to, to drill. So um, here I'd like to just thank um, really sincerely everybody who I've interacted with over the years. I've learned so much from each and every one of you, uh, and it's been an, a great honor. Um, so thank you all, and I'll uh, open up for questions.